Welcome to the channel. Mike here. And I just wanted to give you a part two, I think, of the tractor shed pole barn door project. Uh, like I mentioned in part one, these brackets and rails and all the, most of the goodies that are coming with this door project are used, uh, repurposed, uh, purchased from uh, marketplace or somewhere else. So it's a little bit of, a little more of a challenge when you're using used material. So I'm gonna do a kind of a mix of time lapse and a little bit of this is how I did it uh, video. And hopefully you find it helpful. I am not an expert on this and I'm basically just figuring it out as I go. Some of the brackets that I purchased are kind of more crimped or less open than others. And so I'm trying to start with the best stuff and kind of work my way down. These rails that I have up here are 14 footers and the shed is a 24 foot shed. So in theory, I'll be using approximately two 12 foot pieces. Not exactly sure how that's gonna play out yet. And I'm just kind of doing it as I go. I might be doing and redoing depending on what I figure out. Uh, probably the highlight of the video is going to be the tractor bringing those doors up here and me trying to get them mounted. So that should be interesting. Uh, but in theory on these rails, I'll be cutting off a portion of it. And I should tell you also that the pole barn that I have all my goodies in now down below that a lot of my videos have either started or ended at, I'm kind of using their uh, pattern of setting up the doors. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I hope you find this entertaining and helpful. Here we go. Okay guys, let me give you a close up of what hardware I have and what I'm doing. These are the uh, pieces of hardware I have. These are the rail hangers. And I mean, it's pretty obvious. And these are the, the angle iron that I'm putting up right now. And then this, there's a support that goes over top of these. So it goes like this. And some of these you can tell are kind of squeezed together more than others. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. I don't want to get ones that are too tight when I'm up on the ladder trying to fit them in. But I have a whole box of these and then I have a couple other coffee cans full of them. These are This is the bolt configuration that I came up with to use. Um, and I basically had all this stuff so you know, for lack of the perfect hardware, this I think will work. Basically using one washer on the front and then two washers on the back. And I'm drilling all the way through on these. And I'm gonna take you up on the ladder and show you what I'm doing. So, you can kind of see how that one's set up and how in theory it'll work. In the shop down below, this is kind of the same situation they did. They did a foot in from the support on either end, and then they did a middle bracket. And my doors down there are the same size, 12 footers. So I'm kind of copying what they did in a way. I also have brackets that will go on the seam. Not sure those will be needed or not. So I'm kind of gonna play that by ear. But, and then ultimately I will cut this rail down uh, to fit so uh, basically squaring this up where i want with a square doing a pilot hole and then doing uh, the a little bit larger hole than my bolts so i don't have to fight with them too much and then in theory the washers will hold them uh, hold them and give them strength i don't think the door is actually going to weigh that much so these brackets are adjustable so you can actually slide the rail supports out 
And one of the reasons why I went towards the top of the two by six is so that this sits flush against here to give it extra support. Hopefully I don't regret that decision uh, because it will put the doors a little bit closer together. So we'll see. <laughs> See if that was a good plan. Uh, that's kind of why I want to get some doors up here and kind of do a trial run before I get too crazy. That one down there, I forgot to put the support on, so I need to still do that. So that's what we have up here so far. I know this is one of those things that you watch and you go, well, why isn't he just doing this or doing that? That'd be the easy way to do it. And they don't occur to you till after the fact and you're looking at it. So I'm looking forward to looking at the video and going, why didn't I just do this or that? But we got him up there. I'm gonna have to get the tractor situated and get a door up here and start playing. Okay, so the way I see it, we have two options. We can 
run, uh, put the seam in the middle of one of these supports or we can put them equal and then put some little clamps on the seam and I'm going to opt for putting the seam inside one of these supports. That might be, not be the right decision, but I'm going to try it because it makes more sense to me not to cut up extra rail that you might be able to use later for something else and also not add a bracket that you may not have to add. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put the joint inside this seam right here because the shop is 12 feet on each side and these rails are 14 feet so that gives me the option of not just doing 12 footers on each side i can actually go past the middle so that's what i'm going to try i don't know if that's the right decision but we'll find out So that rail that I'm cutting on right now has an end cap on it with a screw in it already. So I can't pull it through the rail to the end to cut it. I either have to take it out that way or get something else to cut it. I'm gonna get something else to cut it. I actually thought about using the lift on the forks of the tractor, which I've done before, but there's so much moving around on this deal. I don't know how effective it would be. Let's see if I can do this without hurting myself. Bottom, you can see. 
see how far in it is. That's about even. Same here. Ow. Alright. So we're going to slide these in. This rail has a uh, has a cap on the end, so we have to slide these in from this side. And might as well do this back one. Might as well do the back one. Pull this out. So same idea. hanging doors hanging Okay guys, so the uh, ugly shop doors <laughs> was what we ended up nicknaming them. Ugly shop doors are up, they're hanging, they're rolling. And from a distance, what do they call it? Like the 100 yard, from the 100 yards, they don't look so bad. And you start getting them closer, they don't look so good. Um, I'm gonna be looking into some, doing some weathering on them. Uh, there's some YouTube videos on how to use toilet bowl cleaner to kind of weather them and there's the option of painting them so there's some different things that i can do to kind of dress them up and make them blend in a little better but it's what it is uh, the water will not blow in there anymore which is nice and you can see my neighbor brought me over a new stock of hot tub covers i know those are pretty too right those are going to be uh, my insulation just like i did in the shop i'll be cutting those down and uh, putting those in to kind of Control a little bit of the temperature. It's not going to do a whole lot because it's not going to be airtight, but uh, you know, the price is right. So we'll go after that. But anyway, I did learn some things. Hopefully you learned some things of what not to do by watching me do them. And uh, it'll help you on your next pole barn door project. It's my first. And uh, so it was interesting. Thanks for coming along and hope you enjoyed the ride. Take care of yourselves and we will talk to you soon.